Hurricane Ian is now gaining strength this morning in the Caribbean. Overnight, it grew from a, just a tropical storm into a Category 1 hurricane. Forecasters still believe that Ian could become an even more powerful storm very soon, all of it appears to be heading towards some part of Florida. Yeah, and it's been a relatively quiet start to hurricane season, as we've been reporting uh, for people in Florida, but now people along the Gulf Coast are preparing for the risk of both strong winds and heavy rainfall. This past weekend, Governor Ron DeSantis declared a state of emergency and activated the National Guard. Meteorologist Scott Withers joins us live from Tampa, where schools are already announcing closures. So, Scotty, what are you seeing? there on the ground. Good morning. We are live here in Tampa. You can see behind me, we've already got a long line of cars. These people have been queuing up all morning long to get sandbags. And yesterday, they handed out tens of thousands of sandbags all across the western part of Florida. Why? Well, this is the first time potentially that the Tampa Bay area could get hit by a hurricane in more than 101 years. The last time, October 1921, a Category 3 came in just north of the town. That Right now, Ian is on a very similar track to that. We'll have to see if that holds. Take a look right now at the satellite loop. You can see Ian just spinning there in the Caribbean. Already Category 1 storm. That is going to rapidly intensify over the course of today into tomorrow morning when it hits Cuba. Then it's going to go north into the Gulf Coast and then it's going to target the western coast of Florida. Ashley Stokes brought her sons with her to fill and carry sandbags. And they need to learn this is what you do in Tampa. You got to get your, um, your sandbags. Thousands of Tampa residents agree, waiting in two hour long lines to get 10 sandbags from the city. Allie McIsaac and her roommate Jackie Cortez waited in that line to fill sandbags to protect their house. Tampa floods bad, so that's why we're doing these sandbags because we're just going to put a problem up against the doors. All along the Gulf Coast, Florida residents are getting ready. In Key West, tourist companies put away their water sports supplies. Pretty much hunker down and, you know, cross their fingers. They're buying generators in clear water and sitting in long lines to buy gas and search for water in Bradenton. They're out of water, folks, no water. And they're encountering the same problem in Tampa. The water's gone at most stores. There's still some bread left, but it's going quick. Ian is swirling in the Caribbean, getting organized and gaining strength. It's going to turn and head into the Gulf. The path of this is still uncertain. The impacts will be broad throughout the state of Florida. It could be a category four out in the Gulf, but will lose some steam before it makes landfall. The real threat is the storm surge and the flooding. We could see a situation where we have cat four storm surge and potentially a cat one or two hurricane landfall. And that's why the lines are so long to fill sandbags. Okay, most of the schools here in the Tampa Bay area, they are closed today. They're going to start converting those schools over into evacuation centers. Officials are expecting to start some evacuations later today, specifically for senior citizens or those people that are physically handicapped and need more time to get out of town. Let's take a look at where the cone, this is why it's happening. This is the latest from the National Hurricane Center. You can see this is the cone of uncertainty. Well, it's not as uncertain anymore. It's kind of the storm has moved a little bit to the south, now kind of targeting Cedar Key. That's an area that's just a big swampy area be great if it goes in there but guys here's the problem if it does that as a major category three or four storm that means it's going to brush right along the side of tampa specifically st pete clearwater beach those areas are going to get even if they don't get a direct hit are still going to be dealing with category three or four winds and then we got the storm surge issue tampa is a really low-lying city so if you get 10 15 feet of storm surge heavy rains and winds there's going to be major flooding issues all throughout the tampa bay area guys this storm coming in ashore in the next 72 hours. Guys. All right, meteorologist Scott Withers reporting live from Tampa for us. Thank you, Scotty.